Who was the loneliest person? No one can say. But I can name someone who was always with people, but must have been very lonely. She was the daughter of a Mormon couple who joined a trek in 1850, then started a new life in the new world. They followed the spiritual leader, Pastor James Brewster. Mr. Brewster himself had no idea of the area. It was already inhabited by the Yavapai, a group of Native Americans. The tribe attacked the trek and killed all of the people who were with them. Well, almost all of them. Olive, who was 14 years old at the time, and her eight-year-old sister remained alive and were taken by the Yavapai as slaves. For a year, they suffered abuse and humiliation of the worst kind. Then, another tribe heard about the fate of the girls, the Mohave, who lived not far away. They talked to the neighboring tribe and traded the girls for horses and blankets. They were accepted into the tribe and adopted by a loving family. They experienced warmth and appreciation and could finally come to rest and strengthen themselves physiologically. To show their belonging to the tribe, they received the traditional face tattoo of the tribe, which in their belief guaranteed the connection of the living with the ancestors. The girls were happy for a period of time in their lives, up until tragedy struck again. Olive's sister died due to an unfortunate illness. When Olive was 20 years old, the tide turned once again. A messenger arrived from Fort Yuma, where they had heard of the girl's fate. They demanded her return. Olive was never a prisoner of the tribe and was free to go, but she was fine there and didn't want to. But then she learned that her little brother, whom she had thought dead, was alive and looking for her. So with a heavy heart, she left her second family, but wanted to return later. Back in civilization, Olive was called the woman with the blue tattoo. She was dressed in Victorian clothing to hide her past. The tattoo on her chin remained visible, but she also had other tattoos scattered all over her body that no one knew about. They wrote a book about her from the royalties of which she received a part. She financed her studies and later gave lectures on Native American tribes. But later she was pressured to report bad things about the Indians, about the brutality and savagery. That's what the book said. There were a lot of distorted truths spread about her time with the Native Americans. In 1865, she married. Her husband, a catch-all rancher, required her to stop lecturing, not to mention her past, and to disguise her tattoos. She suffered from depression and severe pain, probably post-traumatic stress disorder for the rest of her life. She died of a heart attack at the age of 65.